I've just dropped down onto the, the NQ, so we've moved away from the ES. We've now got the NQ running. We're still running in uh, Globex, so we're on the electronic contract. Cash markets are not open yet. So this is purely electronic. Um, on the two minutes, to say, and this is the, the NASDAQ 100, the NQE Mini, which uh, is very popular. Maybe one you trade. And the reason I've gone to the fast time frames is not because the indicator doesn't work on the slower time frames. It works in exactly the same way. It's just from a, from a video perspective, you just see things happening in a faster time frame more rapidly. As you can see here, our volume point of control has built around this level. Uh, the market tried to break away, had some weakness. We saw a, an upthrust here, probably some decent volume under that. More weakness here, trying to rally. Wick to the upper body. So we've got some weakness around here, but we're trading around the volume point of control here, which is the fulcrum of our market. So um, if it's going to congest further, then this volume here is going to build further also and extend outwards. If the market breaks to the downside, then certainly we've got a low volume region here, which it should move through pretty quickly. And this volume down here is not huge. You can, and the reason for that is because the, the uptrend, which was developing nicely, moved through there fairly rapidly. So there's very little uh, volume built in that area. So for the market to move through that, it's going to be relatively straightforward if it breaks the downside. And equally, if we break away to the upside, we've got the volume falling away here to this nice low volume region up here, which we could expect the market to move through there pretty rapidly if it does break to the upside. Um, and this is what it's all about. This is what the volume point of control does for you all the time. It just highlights all these regions. And this is building in real time constantly. So these volumes are building. They're being recalculated. You can probably see them um, literally as I'm talking. And if I go down, perhaps if I go down to the one minute, you'll see it even more clearly. Let's just change this over to the one minute. There we go. And what's interesting, of course, the break to the downside on the one minute, we've got uh, virtually no volume here, so it'll move through there even quicker. So let's just uh, watch the volume building. Seems to be a bit of congestion going on. And if there's congestion building and it stayed at this region for a long time, then this volume would gradually increase and increase and increase. And at some point, if it exceeds the volume here, then the volume point of control will move. As I said in one of the previous videos, the volume point of control is not a static thing. It's not it, it's not cast in stone. It doesn't stay in the same place indefinitely. It will move according to the next area of congestion which builds. And if that is significant and greater than a prior area, then the volume point of control itself will move to that region and become the next area of uh, the fulcrum of the market where price is in agreement. It's a market profile terminology. It's where price is literally in agreement. As I said in one of the earlier videos, imagine it as a seesaw where you have two people of equal weight and when someone heavier gets on or someone lighter gets on then that seesaw will tilt one way or the other and that's the principle really of the the volume point of control itself because at that point either bullish sentiment will take hold and be dominant or bearish sentiment will take hold and there will be sufficient of it to drive the price action away from the VPOC itself from the volume point of control. So that seems to be holding for the time being. Let's pop back up onto the two minute. That's where we are right now. And the volume is now building in this region. Let's go up onto, let's go to five, see what's going on on five. Okay, we've got the volume. See how far the volume point of control right way down here. We have this rapid move through these low volume areas in this price action. Let's go up to 15. Let's have a look at it there. Okay, way up here from down here. Long way up. And it's a very different perspective. And this is the, the key point. When you're trading, you're going to be using this in multiple time frames to give you all this information. I'm just doing a single chart at a time because I want to keep it clean and as full a screen as I can have so it looks it looks uh, it's nice and easy to look at on the video let's go back on to our I think it was the two minute we were on wasn't it there we go so there we are we're coming probably coming back up to test the the uh, the volume point of control again continue trading around that range and of course what is also happening at the same time in these levels 
we are looking at um, support and resistance on the volume point of control from a volume perspective, which is what this is all about. But the principles of support and resistance are identical uh, in terms of price. So, of course, if you had a price-based indicator, and we do have one, obviously, at Quantum as well, the accumulation distribution indicator, you're looking at support and resistance through two different facets, two different prisms. The first, you're looking at it in the very conventional way, which I'm sure you're familiar with, which is support and resistance from a price-based perspective. And what we are looking at here in terms of the volume point of control is very much from a volume perspective. The principles are exactly the same. It's all about whether a market is going to struggle at an area or not, or whether it's going to find support at an area or not. And that is purely based on volume when you're using the volume point of control and purely based on price when you're using a price-based indicator uh, for support and resistance. The conventional, which is a, a key plank of uh, the volume uh, price analysis methodology. So I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. That looks as though it's going to stay there for a little while. I've uh, probably got some fundamental data coming up in uh, 15 or 20 minutes, and then uh, an hour or so later we'll get the cash markets opening up. We'll get a big surge in volume, lots of volatility as always, and then uh, the indices will uh, start to settle and find some direction. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they will congest all day. But um, you know that that will then be described for you by the volume point of control itself. So hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Lots more to come as always. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye for now.